days before we leave. Road trip to Guatemala. There's Ricky. He's the captain of the vessel. I don't speak Spanish and either does he very well yet. Un poquito. Ooh, just, a, just little, a little bit. A little bit. And here's the car that we're taking on the trip. It's a, what, a 96? Yep. What else is this car? Ford Explorer Sport. Ford, Ford Explorer Sport. It's got some nice 2x4 running boards. Ooh. At least we need any wood for a fire. A lot of signatures. And we have a crack in the windshield. And hopefully no water's coming in. A little bit of a patchwork of this roof here. What else about this car I'm supposed to know? Um, How many miles are on it? The odometer broke at like 127,000 and I know the owner's all the way back to the original owner and we kind of estimated it probably has about 300,000 miles on it. 300,000 miles. Yep. Georgiana's associate pastor, Zach. Godspeed. Literally. And no tickets. <laughs> We have a nice ceiling in here. This is so we can use these magnetic things and hold our maps and stuff up on it, I guess. Hard drive magnets. Evidently, he plans to hang a lot of stuff. The speedometer does work, but the odometer does not. No. And just a day or two before we leave, he had to replace a couple of spark plugs that just fouled out. So everything should be good to go. Yep. Everybody wants to know why I'm taking a road trip to Guatemala. And Ricky has his old beat up car he bought for $180. And for whatever reason, he decided he wanted to drive there through Mexico. Uh, about 3,000 miles from Florida uh, through Mexico to Guatemala. Well, it's really not my trip. I'm going with Ricky Detweiler. Um, his family is moving there because they want their kids to experience other things other than America. And, you know, they're going to spend six months there. Uh, and Ricky's gonna, he quit his job, he's gonna be doing some volunteer work just to help the people around in Guatemala. Uh, it's just more of an experience for them, um, and he needed someone to go with him. Um, his wife said he couldn't go by himself. Jill, being friends with Ricky and Clarissa, said hey. Since Bob went on the boat trip for Ralph, I told Bob he needed to go on this Guatemala trip with Ricky for me. Hey, you guys going to the airport? Yep, running late. One, two, three, two, three. Having fun? Yeah. Ready for your big trip? Yeah. All right, I love flying. <laughs> Let's see, see you later. later. See you in Guatemala. Yep. Bye. All right. Well, we're on the way on our big adventure. Loaded up. We've got no AC. Got the window shut because it's kind of loud out there. We got the back windows open a little bit. And we do have the fan on, blowing a little bit of air out of these things. Not a lot, but a little. Actually, over here is pretty decent. Okay, Ricky has these cameras on the front. There's also one in the back. And they're powered over here by these lighters up in the top, which to me remind me of dragon eyes. And you got all our stuff back there stored in pretty good. So Trying to get on the I-95. A little bit of traffic here, but... Alright, let us go to the Lord of Prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for uh, giving us the opportunity to pray for Ricky and Bob as they go venture out and uh, stay in obedience to the Great Commission. Lord, I just pray for safe travels over them as they go on this adventure, and I pray that they're able to have uh, a great time with one another to reflect and to pray and to sharpen one another as they prepare for a great mission. Lord, I hope that they know that this church is working tightly in prayer, and I just pray that uh, that the roads are safe and that the uh, places that they stay are hospitable, and that you just show them your grace and mercy and just be with them uh, in endurance and in action, and I just pray that they continue to grow closer to you. Lord, thank you so much for their dedication to the church and for this mission. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. All right, we're going to have a safe trip. We're uh, passing the Orlando airport. Why'd you have to go to Orlando today? To drop the family off because they're all flying. 
Where are they right now? They're either in Miami or on a plane to Guatemala. That's the little miniature Ford Explorer. We'll show you on the map later how the route we're going to take to get there. Where did you get this? It's a, it was a Toyota pickup truck micro machine with a topper on the back and I kind of shaved parts down and built some stuff in and tried to make it look like the Miracle Explorer. All systems go. Well, I'm looking at the gas gauge. experimenting to see how far the car will go or not. Good for that. Gas is 245 for regular. 18.666 gallons? Two sixes, not three, Bob. Oh, just two sixes. We don't want three sixes. No. Alright. I said we're about an hour from I-10 on 75 heading north. Well, we're at our second gas station. And we're paying $239 for regular. We've done that stuff all day. Got it. Cancer causing. Around 2 o'clock we got gas. Around 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock we got gas. So every 3 hours driving about 70 miles an hour, we need gas. Yep. We are on I-10, about 10 miles away from Florida Caverns. And we're west of Tallahassee. Florida Cavern State is Park. On the left. I think someone has a campfire tonight. Yeah. How you doing? Hey. Do you have any campsite openings? Yeah. How much? Go ahead, park over there, and then come on in through that front door. Okay. You know how much it is? Twenty-two thirty. Okay. Thanks. How much is it? Twenty-two thirty. Not bad. We're gonna be camping at. Uh, Florida Caverns State Park. We got here at 5.15 and the park closes at 5.30 so we just snuck under the wire there. Got us some firewood. Oh, and behold, look at all those ants. There's the hole right there coming out of. We thought this was pretty fascinating until we came around to this side. They are not happy. It's really hot too right here because there's a fire right there. So the ground and everything is really hot right now. And they must be coming up out of the ground. Amazing. Neither of us got one bite while lighting the fire. And uh, I had a good time sleeping on the table. Ricky slept in the car. He said he couldn't get his legs straight, comfortable. He got kind of creeped up there and I came and saw him in the morning. He's had a bunch of towels all around trying to stay warm. Got a little chilly. A chilly, yeah. I don't think it was that cold outside. The car might have been seemed colder because of the metal or something. I don't know, but uh, I wasn't really that cold outside. I was just uncomfortable. I almost started it up to turn on the heat. <laughs> <laughs> they had the best showers, and I even had a tree frog in mine. Well, here we are at the Blue Lagoon. And it looks like brackish water to me. Kind of muddy around the base of it, the outside. Slippery mud. Here we are. Breakfast. Breakfast. Look at that, that could actually be kind of cool, doesn't it? Yeah. Nice little pothole. <laughs> Break your ankle in. Someone has to read the direct. Looks like when we get to the parking lot, we can park. And there's some trails we can go on, and I think that's an above-ground tunnel, that tunnel cave that we could check out. And then the tour starts at 9, so I think we can get our tickets at 8.45. I wonder if all this is from the hurricane. Matthew or whatever. Look, there's where they fill the lagoon. <laughs> We're in the wilderness to now. Look at the water flow. You really need to pay close attention running through here. This is the blue hole. It's 
probably what, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning? Yeah, like 7.15. There's a hollow tree right there, at the base of it. And it still looks really healthy. Mm. Burning daylight. Burning daylight. We're looking for gators. According to the sign, they should be here. Basically, don't swim and feed with the gators. And no, that's not smoke from someone's fire. That's the morning fog. That's a little woodpecker up there. And this morning's front driver's side quarter panel. Off to the caverns. Kind of cool. Kind of hard to kayak through that. Well, you can get underneath that log over there. Each log has a little section you can kind of get underneath. Mm -hmm. Let's see what the sign says. Journal Andrew Jackson. Oh, a lot of writing, something about this, that, and the other. Spanish territory. See that? Can you see that 1975 high water marker? No. Nope. Oh yeah, there it is. These are really cool looking. Tunnel bypass. Was this a two chicken to walk in the tunnel? Trail passes through this cave. Caution floor slippery. Cave may be wet and slippery. Nothing about no flashlights. Oh, look at the cracks way up there. Look at the spiders. Whatever, that's a cricket. There, I see two of them. Oh, yeah. So we're at Florida Caverns State Park, and we're waiting to get our tickets to go in the cave, but they have a cave that's above the ground on a little trail near the visitor center. So that's where we are now. You can see the exit right over there. There's a bunch of other stuff on the little trail. This one's like a little funnel catching stuff. Wow, this tree's had a tough life. Look at all the woodpecker marks. There's like a dead rodent in there. Oh, wonderful. Uh, Not like is a dead rodent. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. It's a little mouse. We're in Florida Cavern State Park, and we're on one of the trails they have, and they call this the Rock Shelter. It's kind of like a... Not quite a cave, but good to get you out of the rain or storm. He comes equipped with a dead mouse right there. And I want to sell you some Florida swamp land. We saw a big tour bus pull up, which looked like it had maybe a hundred kids on it. We decided we didn't want to wait an hour in line, so we booked it and tried to pass as many as we could. Luckily, we passed all of them. On our tour, there was a total of seven people. Two younger, two older, and us, plus the tour guide. So we're going to make our way down to the bottom of the room here. Just take your time and give your eyes a moment to adjust to the low light. And limestone is made up of fossilized marine life and seashells that accumulated on the ocean floor. At one time, all of Florida was covered by a warm, shallow sea. So as the land, as the water receded and the land arched higher, these areas became high and dry. It's actually, this area is known as the basement room. And it's the lowest area of the cave. It's 65 feet from the surface when you're standing in the basement room. And the water that you're seeing there is forming the beautiful stalactites and stalagmites that we're about to see in our first official room. I 
was going to call them bat wings. There you go. <laughs> People call them bacon all the time. Oh, bacon. This huh? yeah. bacon. Okay. Ooh. Now, the room that we're standing in, the most common formations that you'll see throughout the cave are those of the stalactites and stalagmites. And uh, when a stalactite and a stalagmite join, they form columns or pillars, like you see right there. That's a complete column. And as your husband has always already pointed out, we have these beautiful draperies coming down from the walls of the cave. Now, we heard the water dripping in the last room, but actually um, that's how the formations are formed. As rainwater makes its way from the surface, it's picking up tiny little minerals. And the water drips and the mineral is left behind, and the water then evaporates, leaving the mineral deposit. So, but this room is also special because we have one formation that we allow people to touch. It's the only formation in the entire cave that people are allowed to touch. And as we make our way up the path, I'm going to point it out to you momentarily. When you do touch the formation, if you would notice on the side how black and pitted it is, that's from the oils and the impurities on our hands from people touching it. So this is the original floor here. Uh -huh. And then they lowered the area that you just walked through. Okay. So we have over 30 caves on the park, and they're all wow. undeveloped, like this one. So whenever I enter the other caves um, for mapping or research, this is what it looks like you crawl from room to room. Isn't yeah. that neat? You can see yeah. the calcite and the iron yeah. from the calcite and the iron. Bacon. They developed the paths in the caves so that we could come down here and enjoy the beauty that we were doing. Another new friend signing the Miracle Explorer. I met some real interesting people on the trail and I didn't quite get their name. Thomas, and that's Thomas Lauren. and Lauren. We rode from Chicago to Savannah and now we're going from St. Augustine to California. And you're doing it on, on these guys. bicycles. Yeah, everything. Got everything we need. Tents, camp stove, all the clothes we need. When did you leave? Uh, November, we left Chicago November 13th. Wow, in the winter time. Yeah, it was it was nice in Chicago, surprisingly. It was, you know, in the 50s and 60s, so. So, what's your your uh, Instagram page? Uh, base mileage. Base mileage. Yeah. When do you expect to be there? Or oh, do you have a deadline? Uh, we don't have a deadline, but at least 10 weeks of ride time. How many miles a day do you do typically? Uh, 60 to 100. Yeah. We just left the caverns. Had a good time. Met uh, Larry and his wife. Uh, they were captain from a boat down in uh, Guatemala. So they Star was, Trek, I think. Star Trek was the boat. Uh, Ninety-six foot mast. Definitely Look. worth visiting. It's a pretty cool park. Right now, our goal—not that we have to get there or not—but our goal is 12 hours and seven-minute drive. San Antonio. San Antonio, Texas. Uh, we're just gonna wing it and see what happens. 12 hours and one minute. We'll see how that turns out. Semi truck, that looks like. Your uh, camera's crooked. Yeah, I saw that. Sweet home, Alabama. Well, we uh, spent the last hour trying to figure out how to use these little GoPros because it has the date on it. I don't want the date on it. For one, the date's not even right. Yesterday, in our mathematical wisdom, we did not take into account that there was a time change. So we really get four hours at about 70 miles an hour before we have to fill up with gas again. I'm going to blame that one on me um, because I'm just that stupid, but that's all right. I didn't know either. Now we're trying to figure out how to take the video off of that, that little camera there. We have the miniature SD card out of it. We have it into a bigger SD card, I guess, adapter. It's in the computer. Rest area, Mississippi. Welcome center. Yay! Yay! Welcome to Mississippi. So it's our first stop in Mississippi and we've been filling up our water bottles 
And uh, this one looks like it was filled by the Mississippi River, but it was filled at the water fountain. It looks pretty brown. straight into the sun. The sun has just lowered itself down so we can see. Look at all the little stumps and stuff in the water. Really cool scenery. Probably taking a picture of Ricky's head, but oh well. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this is called have a name. The Miracle Explorer. We are feeding Miracle Explorer. Sometimes it's called Miracle Ford Explorer. That's a middle name for it. Oh, it's actually 5 o'clock in the morning now, so he's been up pretty much most of the night working on these videos. I got to sleep from 1 in the morning to 5 in the morning. There you go. A little bit foggy outside. Yep, just a little foggy. Looks like our cat. <laughs> I guess he didn't like that. Take a picture of it, so I'm in there. Yeah. <laughs> 